In just a few weeks, you'll be able to start putting more money into your tax-free savings account. That's because the TFSA contribution limit is set to rise to $7,000 in 2024, up from $6,500 this year. This is the first time we've seen two consecutive years of increases. Georgia Swan, tax and estate planner at TD Wealth, joins me now with more on this and making the most of your TFSA. Georgia, thanks very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Okay, so for people who don't know, how does the TFSA limit actually get calculated and what role does inflation play? So the limit starts at a base amount of $5,000 and then it's indexed for inflation for every year after 2009. So if we look at it, it's calculated, for example, the 2024 limit was calculated using the consumer price index for September of 2023. That came in at about 3.8, 3.86%. So then there's the federal indexation factor for the coming year, and that's calculated as the monthly average CPI for the 12-month period ending on September 30th, 2023, for example, divided by the CPI average for the 12-month period ended September 30th of the previous year. So using that math, the ind indexation rate was around 4.7. So that gave us a TFSA limit for 2024 of about 6,800 and change, and, and then rounded round it up. up. That's how we got the 7,000. Got it, okay, so what does this increase mean for people's individual contribution limit? So your individual contribution limit is based on um, how many years you have since you turned 18 um, since 2009. So if you were 18 in 2009, your annual contribution limit, and let's say you never contributed to a TFSA for 2023, would have been $88,000. And for 2024, it will go up to $95,000. Now, that's if you've never contributed. The best way to find out what your contribution limit is to go on CRA's My Account and look on that, or your notice of assessment will also give you that information. Now, I find this interesting because the average unused contribution distribution room among TFSA holders is just a bit over $40,000. That's, that's a lot of room. Um, can you remind people about the benefits of using a TFSA so they can really take advantage of it? Well, it's tax-free. It's the only thing we have that's truly tax-free like that. As well, when you withdraw money from your TFSA, it doesn't actually get counted towards your taxable income, so it won't affect any income-tested uh, benefits. It won't affect your OAS clawback. Um, and when you withdraw from it, that contribution room gets added to the next year. It's great for short-term um, goals, but really it's meant for those longer-term goals. So if you're saving for a car, if you're saving for a, you know, the, that vacation you've always been waiting for, this is the time to really make sure that you top those contributions up. And build up your equity. Absolutely. Okay, with this increase, is it wise to consider moving money from your unregistered account into a TFSA? Well, it depends. You do have to take into account the fact that if you have a non-registered account and you liquidate some assets from it, there's more than likely going to be a tax liability. So then you transfer it to your TFSA and your TFSA is going to have to make up that you know, tax uh, payment that you had to make before it starts making money for you. So the best course of action is to make sure that you do crunch the numbers. Speak to your uh, your accountant or your financial advisor, because if you do bump your up your income for one year because you've liquidated something from your non-registered accounts, you don't want it to affect other things. For the most part, it usually comes out in favor of getting that money into the TFSA, but make sure you crunch the numbers anyway. Okay, now, I'm a long-term investor, but can you trade in your TFSA? Absolutely, you can trade in it for sure, but you have to be careful not to be considered to be day trading. You also have to be careful of the fact that there are some prohibited investments that you can't make within your TFSA. And of course, if you do trade in U.S. securities, the U.S. does not recognize the tax-free status of the TFSA, so there is going to be some withholding. You're not going to have to declare it on your income tax return as income, but the withholding will be done at source. So you have to be careful about those things, but the CRA website has some great resources about that. Okay, and finally, uh, is it worth speaking with someone to help you make the most of your TFSA contribution limit? Absolutely. This is the time to speak to your financial advisor, to your investment advisor, and as well, because of what we spoke about earlier, to your accountant, to make sure you're maximizing those contributions. Mm -hmm.